I see the green. No, so yeah, it's just it's we me and Dean realized that when the camera's on, at least for me and him, yeah, it's we just have this natural reaction to rather than face each other and like talk, we do this mm-hmm. and we start talking to the camera. It closes and it the totally changes your yeah. like. You love the camera. I do. No, yeah. I mean, if I see myself on camera, I like naturally look. Yeah, I think the reaction goes like so much differently when you actually. All right, everybody, see put yourself. your phones on silent right oh, now. Oh, that's, that's good. That's yeah. so good. Uh, I just will have mine out. You should be in the moment for the next it. hour or so. But I'm yeah, minutes, do you so. edit this or is it just? So uh, the last one we did, we did, we'd been doing them live. We just been recording YouTube live, um, but it's kind of risky doing that because we, since we don't have headphones on, we can't hear if the audio is good. So like right. the only reason I know that this is set up as nice is because when I set this up this morning, I sat in every chair and recorded like a minute long video of me just talking to yeah. make sure it sounded okay. But uh, I love that. I yeah, love that. dude. So how's work? How's it been? Work is good. I started like two weeks ago, and it's good. It's it's what I want to do. It's pretty sick because it's hard to land entry level jobs in film yeah. and television. Yeah, it's super um, hard. Yeah. And once you land them, I feel like the growing experience just takes off from there. But the hardest part is just getting on the track. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You so you that? writing, you're writing for the Good Fight right now. I'm kind of like a writer's assistant. Writer's assistant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So what does what does that entail? So basically, as of now, I'm pretty much assisting the showrunners a lot, um, and the great people, Michelle King and uh, her husband Robert King, the great people. Um, and it says a lot of learning, man. It really does, because it's it's going into something I've never been at before. Like my previous. Job experiences were more like late night stuff, uh-huh. Jimmy yeah. Fallon, right. Saturday uh-huh. Night Live. Yeah. But now getting into narrative, which was what I wanted to do, and more than anything, dramatic narratives. Uh, it's a lot of learning, just getting into like a writer's room, seeing everything going on, and just you know taking it day by day. Um, every day is a little different. Every day something is changing. You know that's how TV is. So yeah. what's like the typical day look like? Like you go into it like a specific office every day. Or is it just... It's, just a, it's the writer's office, yeah. So mm-hmm. it's pretty pretty cool. It's the writer's apartment. Yeah, you guys don't write and film at the same time. It's just a lot. It's a lot of writing, right? And then they film it. Or how does that... Is it how, what's the order? Like, I don't even know the order of how a TV show right, is made. Right, so it's crazy. And it varies with every different show. So this season is doing a little something different. Obviously, I'm not saying anything like that. I can't share, so I'm just mm-hmm. going to give you, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no spoilers, no spoilers. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, um... How many TV shows work, I'm not saying like mine, but how many TV shows work is that they, for example, they plan the the whole season out maybe, and then after that, they focus on each episode, but they have a structure of the season. Uh, okay. However, other TV okay. shows like to just do it, like whatever, let's just do one episode but one episode. Mm-hmm. But what happens with that is, I don't know if you guys have seen TV shows where you see some characters get lost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some characters are like, what happened to this character? Like, what's going on with this? And that's because um, it might not be very organized. And that's why some TV shows do rather do the whole season outline first. And Mm -hmm. then they have, like, the storylines already set up of each individual character. Uh And that way, every character gets uh, the story they deserve. Exactly, yeah. Because I feel like it could be, like... Even, like, politically, it could be so tough. Like, if you just write episode by episode, like, stuff can happen in between. And, right, And then right. you have to manipulate the way. the good the thing way. about mm-hmm. this show is so smart. I think, I don't know if you guys have watched it, but... I've seen The Good Wife. I haven't seen The Good Fight. You need to see The Good Fight. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I love The Good Wife. It's just such a good, good show. Like, really good it's, show. It's very entailed to, like, the truth is, it, it came out when we were, like, what, 14, 13? Like, young kids. Started and, out. Yeah. yeah. So... A lot of us probably aren't really aware of what the Good Five Wife was, but our parents were specifically. Yeah. It was a very mothers. big show for yeah. us. So it was ABC, really ABC, CBS. CBS, yeah. Don't get it twisted, man. Come on, okay. this is disrespect. <laughs> you've been about, you've been around to a couple different networks. So. You were yeah, at, yeah. at NBC. Do you at like which would do you prefer without 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 like making right, right. Um, terrible? What I could say now is that I've never been in. A place where I felt so important and um, so appreciated mm-hmm. like, now, from at everybody. CBS. Yeah, um, and specifically this cool. show, everybody's so nice. And That's just getting back to yeah. yeah, getting back to it is. But at the same time, I was talking with some one of the writers, and something that's very interesting about today's day and age is that all these assholes are getting knocked over with the Me Too movement and stuff. Like mm-hmm. nobody wants to work with douchebags anymore. No, yeah. nobody does. Um, 
And what I love about, like, the work environment that I'm in is that it feels like a family. I mean, you know, like, everybody is so smart. They're so, like, one of the writers went to Yale and Harvard. That's you know? impressive. Like, it's, mm-hmm. it's that's super so impressive. Cool. And everybody is so clever. And that's why I think everybody should probably, like, watch the show because, and as we're going, going back to what we were saying of the whole seasonal structure, they could plan out the season structure, but... They also like to play with what's going on in the government nowadays. Like Trump is a big character in the set. Yeah, yeah. 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 From everything that's going on in the news and everything, they do make reference at what's happening now. So it's like rolling with the punches in this yeah, show, and cool. it's so yeah. cool. Um, no, that's especially it's... anybody that's like interested in, interested in politics. This show would like really shoot them, wow, and it's yeah. also like a story that covers like different type of viewpoints, different type of personalities, different type of people. Which is so great because you don't really see it. We got one of the characters is a lesbian. It's like a my uh, a large minority cast, which is great. It's mm-hmm. it's a black firm, like a lawyer firm. Um, so it's great. It's it's really cool and very clever show. So I, if you haven't watched it, I definitely recommend it. How'd you get uh, hooked up with that? How'd you how'd you get how do you meet the people? How do you get on yeah the, yeah? The so man, I got really blessed, and I think that's just like the word to say because um, everything ended up working out. So. I was scared because I, I didn't know how to get my foot in the door like in yeah. any writer's room. That's the what I want. industries to do. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. it, it, I think it is. And like being an aspiring writer, um, there's so many different routes you can take. And un- unless you really get lucky at the end of the day, like things might just not work out. Like I know people that are still trying to make it and they're like 30. Um, mm-hmm. And like good for them. Like one day. Yeah. Um, I'm still like on my way there, but obviously like I'm, my foot is very well in the door. Yeah, and it has been for a few years, yeah. And so, as I was saying, I was about to move to LA um, and work, like, an agency When was that? Recently? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, after graduating. I was about really? to... Yeah, and I was after, after for working, in LA. After working at... Yeah. Tonight? Really? Yeah. I had no idea. Here's the thing. I um, thought, because... Working at... Like, I just want to say this really quickly. I really thought that, like, with the moment you got that, like, t- I thought, like, when I was reading all these things about you, because I did a little research... I, 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 I looked. At, I looked in your like background. So like from Don't go Salazar, into Sal, yeah, Salazar, and then uh, the Tonight Show, and yeah. then SNL, and then the the Good Fight. It's like for me, I was just like, oh, that first job, and then he just built upon it. But I didn't realize yeah, you no, were like, sure. really close to like. Oh leaving. man, mm-hmm. man, I had no you idea. You do build upon that, but the thing with um, the jobs that I had, um, like my internship experiences, that people don't move, and good for them. They don't want to move. They want to stay there, but there's. That means there's no like climbing up the ladder there's for no anybody, openings. and like there was forty interns at SNL, and I don't think oh one of them God. even got like an offer at least from my class. Wait, what? that's pretty interesting. Yeah, right. That's so, so it's, it's so crazy. It's the point of an internship. Yeah, yeah, but um, I love all my internship experiences, even like going back to like when I was fourteen. That's I creative. I'm, 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 I've, I've seen your full bio. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I've been really blessed with everything I've had, and all the my bosses have been so great. Um. And if it wasn't because uh, the first job, I wouldn't be here. You know, like everything literally mm-hmm. built up. And that's like one of the best advice I could give someone um, who Don't wants to just start working. Start working. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, do something. Because even if it's a job that you don't like, that's a great experience. Exactly. And you could, you could exactly. like that. That could be a more valuable experience than a job that you did like. Because you, you know what you you know what you want to do and you know right. what you don't so like. So going back to um, me about to move to LA, I was interviewing for agency jobs and what if you don't know what an agency is a talent agency that represents like a wide variety of of like tv shows or Mm -hmm. individual clients like celebrities sports people whatever um and i don't want to be an agent i I don't i want to be a writer that's what i want to do entry level but at the same time it's like you do meet a lot of people and that's how some people get connected so anyway um it's hard to be to start at an agency. Um, you start in the mailroom, right? You start in the mailroom. Yeah. Um, agents aren't the nicest people. They're really not. Mm-hmm. And the pay isn't the nicest pay. It really isn't. Um, so how did I get this job? You, you just mentioned that I was doing Salazar. And um, my professor, who was the one that kind of guided me through the, to, through the, the process of writing the script. So how this class works, I'm going all over the place. It's a three-semester class. First is writing, then it's production, then it's editing. So it's, so it's over writing, a year. So it's over a year. Exactly. Uh-huh. Wow, that's really so interesting. So it's, it's totally I don't want to yeah. say the most acclaimed class at, at Film and Television. I don't know. It gets the most budget yeah, and the best 
people. You have yeah, to get so one class that you have to apply to be in. You okay. know? We're yeah. really bummed. We were really bummed. I should have reached out to you like a few days ago and asked for it, but I would have loved to have seen like Salazar before this because I'm like going. You're, I'm hearing you talk about it, but I have not. Yeah, I not yeah, I would love to talk even more about it, but um, just quickly, I just want to get yeah, yeah, sorry, answer like why, how I got this job. Oh, yeah, yeah. She, one of the, the my professor who left NYU and started working at the Good Fight, mm-hmm. um, I invited her back to come see the premiere and she seemed very impressed and then she reached out to me she's like listen um our writer's production assistant leaving are you interested and i'm like are you kidding yes mm-hmm. <laughs> like that would be so dope um but at the end of the day i knew the chances were slim because everybody was pulling for someone right. everybody you know mm-hmm. what i found out also somebody that was already working in the production office interviewed for my position and i got the job over them which says it says, I got, I, yeah. it says that I got blessed. I don't know how it worked out. I'm uh-huh. not the smartest That's person. I'm not the most talented person. Uh-huh. But it worked out. So I did get really lucky. Um, yeah, so everything really helped me get to where I am. Like that pilot that I made, um, I'm really happy with the outcome. I'm, I would love for you guys to see it. Mm-hmm. It seems like you have a really nice progression of like that like story of starting like down here and it then does. just kind of keeping like it's kind of that like stereotypical like slowly nice but surely story. baby exactly <laughs> slowly yeah. Surely. Uh-huh. and yeah i'm not where i want to be but i'm surely on my way i think right um, i mean you're a very you're still a young guy like yeah uh-huh. no actually i am where i want to be at my age now let me I, scratch that but it's, how old are you you're 24 I'm 22 what the heck oh my yeah, god he's so, he's you're so he's young like, are you kidding me you're you're really the older. first thing this guy said to me was like I haven't seen you forever. I'm like, it's been like <laughs> three months. Yeah. Like, not I, even. I don't know. I just graduated. Yeah. How does that feel to be graduated? Yeah, I know. Did you did you have time in between working to uh, to do like fun stuff the summer? Well, fun stuff was just uh, a lot of applying to jobs. Right. And uh-huh. like this, I didn't even know it was gonna work out. So I was like applying everywhere. Like I applied for a translator on the dodo. Do you guys know what that is? No. What's the, what is dodo, the dodo? Like the animal videos that you guys see on like Facebook and they're like, what? This I don't see it. Do you get this, this dodo? This kitten <laughs> rescued a panda and now they love each other. You know, like those videos that you see? I've never seen <laughs> them. I applied for that. Um, yeah, I applied for anything and everything. I just wanted a job. Um, so, I ended up going back to Florida right after moving back home and I was just applying everywhere and I knew that it's it's usual that people might not have jobs like right after graduating so that's okay I, I was trying to be positive I'm a very positive person I think yeah. but it came to a point like um, that one company was like hey fly back to New York we're gonna interview you um, have a pa- final panel interview and then um, we'll take, take it from there and they were reaching out to me I think they loved me mm-hmm. um, and this was a company that obviously I'm not working for now oh uh, yeah like a different no, company, involved with, right? Uh, so I, yeah. And then it was an agency, let's just say that. And then I came back here and then they ghosted me. They ghosted me. I wow. Nothing, nothing. But listen to this. During that time period was when I heard back from one of the producers at The Good Fight saying, do you want to, if you want this job, if you, you have to interview at this date. And if I wasn't here, yeah, it wouldn't have That's happened. Crazy. So uh, everything, so like, got it in. Yeah, I just <laughs> moved the pieces. I, mm-hmm. I, I have no idea how that ended up happening, but it did end up happening. Um, and during my time here, while I wasn't doing anything, one of my former bosses from SNL hit me up. He said, hey, um, Tom and Carson from the original Queer Eye. Uh, I, I don't know if you have, guys have heard of the show Queer Eye. Uh, Nef- Netflix, yeah, the original one is Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Two guys from that gang um, are starting now their own show on Bravo. And they're like, hey, if you want to come and help us PA, that would be great. And it started off as just a one-day thing, and it ended up me having work for a whole month. Wow. Um, wow. Which was pretty great. And it was great people working there as well. Um, so, yeah, th- this whole you know, business of entertainment and television, it's all about who you know, really. It, it seems like when you get your foot in the door at one place and you do an Excel there, it opens up a door because you're bound to meet someone there yeah. who's starting their own thing. Or, and they see you, and they're like, oh, this guy would be great on my new thing. And exactly. that's what it seems like how it's worked for you. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. either you make a good impression and you get like a lot of people reaching out to you, or you make a bad one and no one reaches out to you. Right, that's yeah. It uh-huh. And it seems like you've been involved with so many like side projects and just different types of media and all different types of genres and because yeah. of that, yeah. I think 
like someone reached out to me uh, back from UCF. I went to UCF my first. Yeah, year. I was just about yeah. to bring that up. I was curious about like, is this like what where you are at now with everything that you've like all the all the different shows you've been a part of? Was the, was this something you pictured when you were still at U- US UCF before you came here to NYU? Like, could you have imagined this? Yeah. Really? Here's the thing. Um, I dream big, so I I really do dream big. I don't doubt that. I so. Don't doubt that. I seems like it's warranted. Yeah, so if I'm gonna go for it, I go full force, and then, like I'm not gonna like settle. I don't like settling, and that's that's something that I think people should realize. Like, do like try everything, um, and then that way you'll be able to see what you don't and don't like. And that's what I was gonna say. One of my friends from UCF reached out to me. And she was like, "What do you? Any advice you have for me?" And I was like, "Yes, try everything. If you're going to film and television, mm-hmm. it's such a broad field." despite the common misconcep- um, misconception that it's not. Okay. A lot of people think that you have to just make films and that's it. And if you don't make a giant film, like you're not a successful person. No, man, we have producers. We have people that handle social media and film. It's so huge. And with television popping off right now, like Apple is now doing Apple you know, television, their own original content. Mm-hmm. Every, YouTube is. Yeah, YouTube well. TV has their own. It's like covered. Everything is evolving. Yeah, so this industry, just, yeah, it's not. It's yeah. it's definitely uh-huh. the time if you want to get into film and television. Definitely the time right now to follow to follow your dreams. Honestly, just do it. You know, it it seems like an industry where that everyone's in it is so passionate about it and kind of wants like like the pet kind of like a path that you're in. I think for that. the reason why um, you have to have passion to follow this industry is because nothing is guaranteed. A lot of my um, peers from Tish, a lot of them are still looking for jobs. A lot of them, yeah, um, have gone to much older than you people, also people that are older than me. Yeah. Um, but you have to have passion, and you know, just because it worked out for me early, um, not everybody gets it, it happens like right after graduating. But you know, you do have to have passion and you have to persevere and really go for what you wanted like if you need to print out a freaking picture and something to remind you to stick on your door every morning uh-huh. you got to do it because you got to wake up and remember why you wanted to pursue this in the first place you know mm-hmm. i told my mom like when i was at ucf i was like either i transfer and you guys support me or i switch majors mm-hmm. and i'll do business because i'm not gonna like set up and do something wrong right if i'm gonna uh-huh. do strive for something i'm gonna try to reach like the yeah. best so what, what, what were you initially going for for freshman year in college at UCF I've always wanted to do film and TV like, mm-hmm. it, since high school um, I did. Where, where do you think that comes from because like there are a lot of people um, in our circle that they have a lot of different like dreams and like different goals for themselves and I'm definitely one person I have like a ton of different like little like yeah, things uh-huh. that I, I get fascinated with but you have very I've, ever since I've known you it's, yeah, it's always been TV, film. film and TV like that was your goal yeah and why, why do you um, think that is I learned English watching TV, <laughs> which is funny, That's but it, it's one of the ways I learned how to speak English. I'm Colombian for anybody watching and doesn't know. I migrated here when I was four with my family. Um, immigrated, not migrated. <laughs> and yeah, I think television is so powerful because I feel like I'm a very compassionate person. Um, if you haven't seen me at a bar crying, then you probably are not. Well, I, I have, wait, I have to tell the story now of how I actually first met David. So, um, okay, segue. Can I, can I, can I, can I, wait, can I tell this? Is it all right if I tell this? Yeah. Okay. All right. So the first time I ever met David was right after I joined the fraternity that we, we were all in when we were like in college. I, I'm still in college, not fraternity no longer exists, but when it did exist, um, I would be, David was a little bit older than me. And one day he gave me a call and was like, Hey man, can you want to run an errand, errand with me? And I was like, all right, yeah, yeah, sure. I'll run an errand with I you. I love company. Yeah. So, um, I go, I, I meet him on the way to the Apple store cause his phone is broken, right? Your phone, or was it your laptop? laptop. Your laptop, laptop was broken. And David just goes to me and he goes, man, dude, I got kicked out of the bar last night. And I was like, and I'd never met this kid. So I was like, this kid must be a motherfucking badass. He must've just punched somebody or puked or thrown a chair. I was like, dude, you fight somebody? He's like, no, no. I was like. Did, did you throw up? And he's like, no, no, no. I was like, well, what happened? Did you like, did you break stuff? Like, why, why'd they kick you out? And he's like, dude, like, 
just sit in the back and I, I just had to have a good cry. Like, <laughs> just had to let it go. I was like, cool, man. Like, power no team. I, I was just shame. so surprised. I thought you were about to, like, tell me the craziest story of, like, you just killing these kids. What's crazy? No, that's, that's, yeah, it's way more respect. Yeah, it's way more powerful than. But as I was out. saying, I think uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to pursue like film and television is to tell stories and allow people to step inside somebody else's shoes. Um, specifically, like while I was in college, like Trump got into um, the Oval Office, um, and everything he did, like in his campaign, kind of seemed like fueled by hatred, um, which kind of unmasked the the racism that was you know like boiling in in, in, in the United States, and I think one of the things I would love to do with the stories I tell is allow people to see specific my community, the Latino community, mm -hmm. um, and see the struggles they face and see why they choose to leave their country and see um, why they want a better life here in the United States, um, despite the fact that they're not Latino, despite the fact that they are privileged white people. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and just, I think that's a beautiful thing about right. film and television. It allows you to like step out of who you are and like see the world inside somebody else's viewpoint right because th there's there's really no other way for someone like, like like a white privileged person who's from this country to like s experience that or see that but through like me like media and film and the song that you'd be doing it's, it's really it's interesting something i was thinking about is is you talk about like this like pride you have for your La latino community and like that seems so cool to me but at the same time like like i have no interest for whatever reason certain white people like like the small subset of them really gravitate towards white pride, but uh -huh. then like ninety percent of white people are like, yeah, we're like we don't have that like like congenial like bond. And so I think much, one but, of like, the reasons of that being is because for so long like minorities were kind of pushed to the side, you know, and kind of like made us feel like lesser. society lesser subordinate, you know, so. It, we had to have that pride in order to survive, mm -hmm, you know, in yeah. order to, like, That's keep going. That's so true. That's we so have true. to, mm -hmm. you know, be prideful of who we are and be, like, we are different, but that is okay, and let's celebrate who we are. Um, and as a white person, you are celebrated every day, you know? Like, you, just the fact right. that you wake up and, you know, mm -hmm. even me, like, I have privilege, like, just the, the, the color of my skin. I don't know if you are just going to hear this or see me, but I'm sure. white. Um, and being a Latino white person, there is privilege in that as well. Um, but th that's a whole conversation. Different. Sure, conversation. I, I think the reason that there's not like we don't feel like the sense of like camaraderie or pride is that like we're like. What's up, cough, sir? <laughs> How's it going, brother? <laughs> he asked me if I knew you today, and I'm like, Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I was. I I couldn't remember if you guys had ever met. Back to sleep, copster. Good. Let's continue. Um. So you know, you were just talking about this. Um, like this, Im your like immigrant background. And I know that Salazar is somewhat of an immigrant story, right? Like, I, I yeah, don't know too much it about it. It is an immigrant story. Um, and it's inspired by, like, my dad's story and, like, my family's story. Um, and that's what writing is. You gotta, as a writer, you just gotta live. If, if anybody wants to write and do something, um, or be an actor, or the, you, you want to, like, portray something in reality, you gotta live. You can't, like, you know, you can't be, like, Scarlett Johansson and, like, play, like, everything and, like, get away with it. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta live out there, and you gotta experience people and meet people, and that's just the the best way to do it. And yeah, Salazar is an immigrant. So okay, I just I, I gotta ask this. Lot. Sorry, no, no, it's okay. Uh, I just gotta ask this: if you had to pick someone to portray your life up until now in a film, who is it? Oh man, me? No, no, it can't <laughs> be you. You're another actor who has to portray your life. I want to have. I want to start my own biopic. Your own biopic by you. <laughs> yep. Written, directed, and acted by you. David Ramirez. That'd be pretty good. I don't think anybody could play me better than me. I'm just gonna uh, put that out there. I don't know. I think you may be right. Actually, <laughs> I don't, I don't think know. anybody could play me better than me. <laughs> yeah. Next question. Um. So, what was the process of making Salazar like? Because it was crazy. It was crazy. Like big, what was your What was your role? Um. I was the showrunner. So I was the creator of the show. Um. I wrote the script, and then I was like in charge of like kind of everything there was a director underneath me there were producers underneath me um but i was the one like i was my vision so it was really cool to be in that like showrunner role and when i started writing salazar um that's when i first started producing that's when i first started 
we could definitely start out. When I first started um, working on Salazar, like in the production, that's when I was working at Jimmy Fallon. Um, okay. And I was taking night classes. So it was crazy, man. Like, I did not sleep. I didn't see you. My roommates did not see me. Because you were the hardest. You were the man for. Yeah, uh I was the man. For Salazar, yeah. 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 Uh But it was just, uh, I was like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to make sure it's done right. And if I'm going to intern at Jimmy Fallon, which is such a great opportunity, Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure that I do a great job. So if I didn't have to sleep, I didn't. If I didn't sleep, you know? Um, so at the end of the day, it was like a, a lot of hours, a lot of time put into all these different things. Um, I got, I think I got two Ds that semester, mm-hmm. which is okay. Grades not everything. It's like grades not everything. Yeah. Yeah. Look at me now. Uh-huh. Six exactly. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's gonna be asking for your uh, grades from NYU Fisher. They're not. Right? Mm-hmm. They're not. And a cool thing that I did at NYU, which a lot of people don't know, is that. I did two minors, one in business, in entertainment business and technology, um, entertainment media and technology, and then another one in social culture analysis. I and that, yeah, you know, I didn't know, you know, know, that. know you that. Was so how dope. did you do all these yeah. things? Wait, how, like, <laughs> I, I have enough trouble just doing my major, major. in my mind. Yeah. Like, it was you like all this in four jobs. Yeah. Um, that social cultural um, analysis minor was so dope because it, it kind of forced me to like learn about like politics and learn about um different communities and you know kind of like it made my writing smart and clever you know um and even going like back to like the people I feel like I didn't study anything because like the people that I worked with that are writers like that like studied law and work and in this show and like they're so clever you know it's mm-hmm. you, you just gotta if you want to like write for TV I think it's appropriate for you for you to learn and to for you to show like what you've learned in right. life to, and to be well versed in, in like exactly. a multitude of, of things yeah because uh, you can draw on like those experiences or what you know and add that to your script yeah yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. and that just will improve you as a writer yeah and I think another going back to like privilege and let's say like as a white person and like you want to write a story about like a minority or whatever a minority group I don't know um, I think it's fair only if you do justice to that community um, and I think that's one of the, the reasons why it's important for as like a white person for you to recognize your privilege and be like okay I want to use my privilege to mm-hmm. kind of bring up this community and bring this community to life right. and I think that's very fair yeah. um, but you got to do that community justice and you got to mm-hmm. learn about that community you got to you have to travel and like go and like live with them for like a long time it's, I don't know. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of yeah, sense. Like you does. can't, you can't expect. As like, if I went and wrote a f- uh, a novel about like Chinese or Japanese fishermen in some part of like the southeastern Pacific, like, and I made it sound super f- stupid and fucked up, then yeah, I I would I couldn't really like have a reason to be surprised if people got mad at me. Yeah, like you gotta all... do a good job. If you're gonna do something that risky, mm-hmm. you have to do a good job. Yeah, and you gotta tell you have to tell the truth. Yeah. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. Right. Um, no respect. So I have a lot of more questions about, like, you, so we've heard a lot about Salazar. We've heard a lot about the good fight, your new job. Um, what was the, like, period, which do you, I'm going to ask you a question you're not going to want to answer. Which do you prefer? Did you prefer The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon or SNL? And what were those experiences like in the same way? Because they're both kind of comedy, yeah, late night shows. Very popular, yeah. And where are they different? Um, without giving too much away, um, I'm just gonna frankly say SNL was a better experience um, because as an intern, I feel like you got more responsibilities and you felt more as not so much as an intern, but like an actual like employee of SNL. Mm-hmm. Um, but with that being said, I wouldn't have gotten SNL without Jimmy Fallon, you know. And mm-hmm. things I've learned at Jimmy Fallon, I still use now, you know. And it was more things about work ethic that I learned there and being somebody that is able to roll the punches and being somebody that could work at a fast paced environment. I learned so much there that I was able to take into my next jobs and I even use now. So is most of the writing on SNL done by the cast? Like uh, don't don't get, does the cast write a lot or no? Am I totally off on that? Yeah. On SNL. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Because Norm McDonald used to be on uh, SNL. I don't know if you know who that is. Comedian. 
without giving too much away. <laughs> I just have to be careful in how I phrase oh, okay. it. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, what, what yeah, do, don't do what you gotta do. Yeah. Don't worry. The about cast it. is so talented. Um, and yeah, sometimes they do right, but there's also writers that are like professionals and so safe and so smart. Are there people like that you've met through your period of time that maybe you're not working with anymore or? Generally, like, who, who are some people that you've, like, met so far that you really want to work with again? That you, like, you, who had really, like, great experiences with, and you're like, I want to do an even bigger project with this person. I think it could be oh, yeah. so cool. The people that worked on my pilot, like, man, like, I swear, like, if I was given, like, $100 million to make, like, a sick TV show or whatever, mm-hmm. I just made up another, by the way. I would bring them back. I think they're such talented people and so driven and believe so much in my project. Are they all NYU students yeah. or no? All NYU students, the, the people in production. Um, yeah, most of the, there's some people that weren't NYU students, like the, the like the person that helped us with truck driving. You know, like you don't think of that when you're thinking about film and television. Like uh-huh. So many people dedicate their time and you know their valuable time and exp- you know talent into this into my project. And they were just so amazing to work with that I just want to work with them again. Um, shout out to shout out to our cast and crew. Definitely, yeah. They're great people. Great people. So I hope that is it gonna be us. like? Is Salazar gonna be released online at some point for people to buy or check out or after after the film festival period and? Because I know it's nominated in Los Angeles International Film Festival. Yeah, dude. Somewhere. Thank you. Thank That's you. So cool. Um, yeah, it and then we're submitting to other film festivals and. Without giving too much away, it's in the talks with maybe some networks. Oh like some boy, stuff. really? So that maybe, maybe, so and maybe, maybe, and maybe I just made that up. Would you, uh, but hy- hypothetically, hypothetically, in a totally, totally hypothetical hypothetical world, hypothetical, yeah. only hypothetical. I also have yeah. a type of person that doesn't yeah. like to like release stuff. Yeah. You know, to like release not release yeah. content, but release like, like info. things that are yeah. happening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Just because you I think things content. need to need to happen by themselves. Yeah. And, you know, natural. Yeah. Like, so hypothetically, if um, a network were to really like your show and want to do something with it, would you hypothetically get the chance to still be involved with that, or would you probably not? Depends. Depends. It depends the situation. On, situation. on the network. If I, they could either be like, we love the idea, but we don't like you, and like that's, that's how a network might work, or they could be like, we want you to be one of the writers. I think I'm too young to be a showrunner right now, mm-hmm. and I think I'm... A lot of pressure. Yeah, yeah, and I don't uh-huh. have the experience. Mm-hmm. I know I'm too young to be a showrunner. I don't have the experience. Yeah. I don't. I wouldn't not go in there as a showrunner, right. even though I would be the creator, but not the showrunner. That's good that um, you know that though. Oh man, I know. That's where smart. I stand, yeah. but that's smart. Yeah. That's that takes that's like yeah, that takes maturity. Real. Yeah. That's the real. But that's the great thing about really like brain. being like where I'm at right now is like every day I learn so much, mm-hmm. man, and like it's just crazy how. Yeah. A show where you just see and, so much stuff every there's day. one thing yeah. learning it at Tish and sitting in a classroom and taking notes and then like actually going on a TV show every single day and seeing the writing okay. process and seeing them put up the little colored cards and like outlining mm-hmm. storylines and stuff yeah. for the whole season it's those small things that, right, that you just pick up every day how was right. your how like how was your overall opinions of Tish of like what you got out of it or did it you ever feel like it was a waste of time does the college never, care feel like waste never, of never, 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 never. I am so grateful with my experience at NYU Tisch, and I think I wouldn't be where I am now. I know where I wouldn't be where I am now. Are you crazy? Like, the, thing, the opportunities I've gotten, um, I, yeah, I, I got signed to a manager because of my script. Yeah, you found your job because so you're a you manager? Yeah, yeah so I do, which is pretty cool. But what's, is it a guy or a girl? It's a lady. She, I love her. That's so cool, man. Very that's, cool. So that's crazy. I was just watching but, BoJack Horseman, so. But something that that kind of like grinds my gears is people that are not grateful for mm-hmm. being mm-hmm. in like Tish, especially film and TV, or just being at NYU. There's so many other kids that would die to be here that I grew up with that yeah. didn't get accepted, didn't get mm-hmm. the chance, don't have the money. That would love to be in your shoes. That would love to learn. That would not like f around in class. That would actually pay attention. So when people out here are like criticizing, like the teachers are criticizing like what they learn or criticizing the program like drop out like don't do this like mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that yeah. would love to be in your shoes and would do so much better yeah. you know because they would actually appreciate this experience right if you're not taking advantage of your situation why be in it especially as something that's so high regarded as NYU Tesh NYU in general yeah NYU it's in general easy, yeah. it's easy to, it's easy at times to be like 
I don't like the way this is set up right now. Like, I don't think this is ideal. It's it's very easy to, like, get in your head and just be like, screw this. Like, this right. is stupid. Cause, cause, I know better. Because like, when you're going you to school, like, yourself. you're paying for it. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. You're paying. I mean, you should. I mean, you don't have to, but it's exactly. super not to. It's all about, you know, everybody gets opportunities. It's all about what you do with them, you know. It's, I mean, some people, you could either take advantage of it or not. Do you, uh, do you see Sam Sherman a lot? I haven't seen him in a while. I haven't seen him in forever. I remember the I apartment. Jordan Coyne, you know. did? I didn't see yeah, Jordan in a while. I was with Brody last night because he was hanging out with all of us. Um, how's Jordan doing? Oh, he's great. Dude, he's I don't know. He's getting money. What? He's getting money. Yeah, because he's working he at, at uh, uh, NBC. NBC? NBC? I didn't know. He was, I thought what? he was on uh, Nets. I thought he was Nets. like MSG. That's no, Jake Kaczynski. NBC. No, I thought he was. Oh, I thought Barclays. Wasn't he Barclays? working at Barclays? Yeah, I said it's Brooklyn, Brooklyn Nets. Yeah. I would never forget NBC. Somebody tell me. Wait, where is it? But what does he do? Um, he's doing like the. I don't know if it's like financial side or like the business side, but it's kind of that type of world. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. I don't mm-hmm. know. What's up? Yeah, good, I good, remember good that apartment. Him. He's going to be the next Jimmy Fallon, everybody. That's where <laughs> really? Really? You think so? <laughs> Jerry Coyne? Yeah. Really? Did he talk to this guy? He's funny. He's very funny. I see he's kind of like yeah. Jimmy Fallon. I was kidding. Do you think Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon? How funny? Do you, do you find Jimmy Fallon to be one of the funnier late night hosts or not? Yes. Okay. What, what are your? Thoughts I don't think Jimmy him? Fallon's that funny personally. No. no? I, do, I I do love his interview with Cardi B. It's one of the most just odd things. I was working. You were working there. Yeah, that that is one of the weirdest interviews <laughs> I've Can ever I also seen. Say something about Cardi. Yeah. Dude, so down to earth. Really? So cool. Great. cool. That's cool. So great. She was like in the hallways, like speaking about church with people and like being funny. And, like, I feel like she's just got a huge personality. Like that's not for show. Like she's I feel so like small that's just person. who she is. She's so small in person, so cute. I was also working at SNL show announced her pregnancy. So pretty cool. I've kind of been like around car. I've been mm-hmm. freaking good luck charm. That's what I've been. <laughs> her career's taking off because of me. I know you also yeah, worked with Natalie cool. Portman. We've talked about this before. We did. I definitely. I did. Like I did. And I was like right next to her, and she's. Gorgeous in person, and she, she is hasn't beautiful. aged anything. She and she's beautiful. great to work with. How old is she? She's like thirty talented. something. Thirty. Thirty. So she has to be. Yeah. She's in her thirties. She was at. She go to NYU. I think she did something at NYU. Did she? There's a lot of people yeah, that like, either they either yeah. went or they, or they taught, came back for like, like a year. Like, year I know James Franco did that. Yeah, there's right? so many, so many guys. A couple other celebrities. Great guy. Um, but anyway, going back to like. That old apartment you used to have, I used to hang out there like all the time. I used to sleep there. Like, Dude, like, I, I lost the denim jacket there, and if, if anybody has seen it, I need that back. <laughs> it, might, it might be in this closet right here. <laughs> yeah, I need that denim jacket. Oh, I do not have the denim jacket, but. Yeah, I thought it was you. You did? Yep. <clears throat> why? I didn't want to call you out in front of all your viewers. Wait, why? All of our <laughs> four viewers. And listeners. And listeners. I don't know, dude. You just cool. slept there every night, and I'm like, this kid probably took my denim jacket. I did not take your denim jacket. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm not going to start accusing people on this podcast. Um, I did sleep at your apartment a lot. I was very much a mess. Big couch surfer. It was, was a learning couch, experience. Big couch good. surfer my freshman year. Um, but that was like a lot of fun. I remember when <laughs> you and Brody got the bunk beds. College. College, man. You built that stuff. Yeah. Him, and his, him and his brother built that, right? Very crafty individual guy. Brody, then, you're listening to this. He probably will later. You got a good head on those shoulders, buddy. Um, I slept on Sher- in Sherwin's bed for like a while. Remember when he first started dating Pat? Without Pat? Sherwin. Without Sherwin. No, Sherwin was on <laughs> I wanted to make sure that's right, clear. Right after Sherwin, uh, Sherwin got like started dating Paca, he like vacated his room for like that whole week, and I just was like, best thing that could have happened. I'm gonna I'm gonna come and sleep here for like four days in a row, hang out. But those were yeah, like, I haven't really seen that guy in forever. We should definitely catch up. Yeah. Do you ever see Kyle Hogan being in there? Next question. Next question. Oh Tran- my transferred. god. He transferred. He transferred to where? I, I was talking to Todd. Oh, he said he transferred somewhere in California. Good for him. Oh, good mm-hmm. for him. Good I for that. Like, totally yeah. kind of like lost touch. Who with is him. she? Next question. Um, man, we, you were just like running through. Oh, I know that there's like another big, big topic. Are you? No, no. Oh. I want to talk about. Yeah, exactly. Like your your family background, you mentioned you're Colombian. Right. Like I feel like there's a lot more to that. Yeah. Um, what's your family like? My dad was a salsa singer, everybody. If you didn't know now, my dad was a salsa singer. Yes, See, that's right. That's you where you get talents from. That's where I get all my talents from. Um, and 
they I inspired my pilot based on like my, my father. My father was a salsa singer. The pilot is about a salsa singer who who leaves his name and fame to you know support his family and to keep them safe. And that's why a lot of people leave their countries. If you see the people what's happening like in like Venezuela and like people starving and people you know in Syria and, and that they just have no other choice but to like evacuate and like mm-hmm. leave, even if they don't want to they have to um back to my family um yeah i have father mother an older brother who's a year older and then i have a I younger brother a who is you have mm-hmm. and he knows you i spoke to him about coming here and oh, you yeah. tell him what's right all right it's cool it's all right. and uh i have a little brother who is gonna be 13 in a couple of days and that kid is the funniest kid you'll ever meet he's mm-hmm. like me but like on steroids and like just the shorter and like funnier he's just crazy and I I don't know I, I feel bad for his teachers and stuff because I know he's like if you imagine me but like even more spastic <laughs> right and oh, I think what? yeah but he's so smart he's so talented too like, like that kid could do like whatever he wants he's so talented yeah we got a we got a bright future ahead yep was he 8th grade he has no that's what is the 7th yeah he has he, he better work his butt off um I used to go back I used to be like his like private tutor in a way I would like give him tests test there's this test in Florida called like the FCAT I don't know if they still have it mm-hmm. but it's a standardized test and they I would like test them and everything I just want the kid to be smart I just feel like me growing up me and my brother both growing up we really didn't have anybody there to like guide us like while we were doing homework mm-hmm. while um we were kind of assimilating to this foreign country we just didn't yeah. have anybody yeah. to, to look up to um and i just really want to be there for my brother even though i'm far away from him he like called me the other day he's like what should i tell my guy my guy that's cutting my hair right now like how should i cut it <laughs> i'm like i'm gonna send you a picture i'm driving bye and then i sent a picture of justin tim like you can't, you can't go wrong with that um that's so funny yeah he's a great guy um yeah so back to like no know, I, I, I was like i was actually on your first film Right back when, do you remember that? Yeah, I was uh, I was an extra. What was the film called? It's called Visionless. Visionless. Oh man, that was just kind of like it was. It was me just pointing out like my kind of like my emotions of what was going on, put it politically on paper. Uh, and yeah, that movie was freaky. That guy who freaky. played the teacher and was eating the popcorn, and he just kept like. They kept doing like takes, like we did like four or five takes of it, and he's like tossing this popcorn into his mouth. It, it was just like the I remember just sitting there in the back, just this. I'm I'm I mean, like what am I? I'm 18 years old, and I'm just sitting there, and I'm like I'm like three, maybe four weeks into college, maybe more a little more than that, maybe like a mu- month and a half, and I was just like, what is going? On? I was so it was cool, a cool movie though, very cool movie. Sam was great in that. Sam, Sam was, was excellent. Great. Sam, let's go back to Sam. Sam is yeah. such a talented guy. Sam, if you're listening to us, give me a call. I have a proposition. I, I, do you know what, where he's working? No. Um, but he was crazy good in that movie. He like had he we kept, <laughs> kept adding more dialogue to him and like giving other people his lines because he was just so. Dude, also, um, one of the couple, I think two actors didn't come. And I didn't know that. Yeah, you didn't because I rolled the punches. Yeah, as a director, yeah. as a director of a student film. Mm-hmm. Wow, you have to, um, you have to, you know, kind of like be that like the face and make sure everything is like calm. Like with, especially with actors, like those are people I don't know. The people that came to act, aside from you and the other guys, a lot of them were like people that I messaged on backstage, which is a website that you find actors on, mm-hmm. and I was just like. Would you, are you interested blah, blah blah and they need footage for the reel so they're like yeah we'll do it um, so obviously I'm not gonna like freak out and be like oh mm-hmm. my god we're mm-hmm. missing somebody it's over we just gotta roll with the punches yeah. like, alright how are we gonna fix this next that's it um, yeah it was a cool movie thanks that's on, pal. that's on Vimeo right it is on people Vimeo. go check Vimeo. it out Vimeo. visionless on Vimeo you should probably look up Dave Ramirez but yeah right. um, what are like your biggest who are are your biggest inspirations like creatively like which people regardless of industry or like the people that 
you're like, damn, what they did for whatever is like the same kind of like impact that I want to make. Okay, so um, maybe not necessarily in the film industry, but let's say who do I think? I think one of the people that are popping up in my head is Selena. So not Selena Gomez, but Selena, the the Mexican singer who um, was shot at a very young age. Um, and what she did for the Latino community was pretty great because she kind of like transcended from... I don't know the story. What, what, yeah. what happened? Um, yeah, you should probably Google her. Because that's a whole podcast podcast in itself. Um, but yeah, very talented. She's a singer. And J-Lo made a biopic movie for her. Oh, okay. Because I was just about to say, it sounds like a great story to make. Who else? Who else do, do, do I admire? I admire a lot of people. So like right now, like me trying to think of people is... Um, Question. It is. It's a tough question. Super tough it's question. a tough question. Mm-hmm. Cardi B. Cardi B. Love her. <laughs> Love Cardi. Her music's yeah. pre- uh, like so shockingly like catchy. Sorry for going back to her. No, no, no. Cardi is always worth talking about. I think, in all reality, if we are gonna speak about Cardi, because I did bring her up, and I kind of does just want to segue to Cardi because I love that girl. Mm-hmm. Is something that, despite like her her background, the girl is a definition of like you know, self-made and, like, grinding, like, working hard, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, which is pretty cool. I just probably stopped talking so much for Cardi B. I'm embarrassing myself now in front of everybody. She's gonna listen <laughs> to this, and she's yeah. gonna be like, stop. I think, I think she would be flattered to hear um, no, yeah, a talented guy such as yourself talking about, mm-hmm. talking about her. Um, Thanks. It's, it's really cool to see you, man. Like, to see you doing so well. Because I, 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 we don't, I definitely don't see you as much as I used to, which is, like, so I live in the Upper West now. With my you brother. do? Yeah. Yeah. And it's much different there. from down here. Ball up there. Yeah. I pay the same rent that really? I did here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This but it's nice small, that. smaller. It's Wait, now it's probably bigger. Bigger. Yeah, the living room is huge. Really? Uh, yeah. My room is a little smaller. I think my room is this size, maybe. This is a nice size room. Mm-hmm. You don't need more than this. You don't need more than this, dude. You just, you don't need my room is stuff. stuff. Yeah. Listen, I my room has never been so organized. Now that it's smaller and compacted. Mm-hmm. Also, dude, going into Oh, something I wanted to speak about was um, I like my different jobs as an intern and even now I get so many different tasks um, and they're really widespread and there's so much you could do. But I feel like I'm somebody that I know my strengths and I know my weaknesses. Right. So I make sure my strengths shine. Like, let's say like Mm -hmm. at um, Fallon, um, came Halloween and I know my supervisor likes to decorate the office. And I literally made like a, a plan and I made like a kind of like I like I put pictures together and I like like a vision board whatever blah 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 and I was like this is what we should do blah 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 and she loved it we decorated it like um what was it um it the, the the clown the clown yeah yeah <laughs> when I tell you I made the sewer and it was like kind of like from the it guy the clown point of view so it's like if you were inside the sewer like looking at the kid so like, oh man it looks crazy it was <laughs> that so looks sick terrifying it sounds no yeah and the office terrifying. looked pretty sick and um that's one of my strengths like being creative like being you know like organizing like blah, blah blah and then like weaknesses blah blah yeah. blah, blah 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 super but, self-aware yeah so being self-aware is so important yeah. at whatever job you are mm-hmm. in in shining in what you are good so like if you ever do mess up or if you ever don't do something right you know and we're all humans that happens then that is kind of like written out by your your pros i think that's something we kind of like touched on like in our conversation last week like yeah. we talked about how um it's way harder to try and like change who you are than it is to like learn to use the skills that you do have and those might not be, like, the skills that you necessarily wanted to get. Like, mm-hmm. you may have wanted to have, like, another set of skills and, like, different talents. But it's going to be a lot harder to change those. Yeah. And it is going to be to, like, really master what, you, what comes naturally. What, what comes – yeah, but it's, I would say it's yeah. better to, like, master what comes naturally to you. Yeah. You know? And even so, if some of those things that you, – like, you, you're not – like, you, if your insecurities kind of hide those things that you're good at or you're just not comfortable with yourself and, like, just really, like – becoming making yourself self-aware of what you're good at when you're not and focusing on that that's tough but that's much more important than lying to yourself and trying to be someone that you're not and, and it's and it really seems like 
like what you have going for yourself and the way that like you hold yourself it's really like boosted you into like a better role each time that like and you're just go- gone from here and you're just and you just keep climbing Thank and it's man. just cool to know someone like you Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Okay. Look at you guys doing a podcast. Thank you guys for having me. Well, I think what me and Dean realized is that, like, there is a shocking amount of really cool people that we're around that I we agree. don't always kind of realize until it's too late. Um, like, because my, my dad, like, always talks about, like, all these all these friends he's had from college, and all of them are doing, like, really interesting, like, a lot of them are really successful guys. And they're doing cool stuff. And... I kind of, like, realized that we, I already have that, like, right now, those same people that, like, my dad, the way my dad talks about them, I'm around, like, right now yeah, in my life, yeah. and they're all within walking distance of me, for the most part, or a subway right. ride away, like, I should try and, like, learn as much from these people, and, like, same with Dean, mm-hmm. and, like, as I can. There's so know? many people. Yeah, so many people. Yeah. Um, going to NYU there's just so much yeah talent. exactly there that's, is yeah, that's, there's that's, so that's many really smart kids and that talent. sounds like bragging because uh-huh. it sounds like it's bragging but brag baby I think it's really true like I to be honest like when I go home sometimes I see my friends from back home some of them have gone to like really great schools they really get it they're really smart they're really aware of what's going on in the world and like within between other people some of them are stupid as Right, like it's really like a parent. Because you can be, you can still be trapped into this bubble. Because that's what that's what some colleges are like. Yeah, NYU is not like that. You're you're in the the world. PD is a disease, man. It's like gonorrhea. Just yeah, yeah. Yeah. So So I do want to hear your take on politics because I know you have some strong feelings, strong feelings towards our uh, commander in chief Um, or president. I don't know why I call him commander in chief. It feels old too. Republican <laughs> is a thing to say for me. How long is this podcast? Um, yeah, I, 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 don't know, I don't know if politics we, oh, is, yeah. is the right road. Well, I just want to hear some general thoughts. Because I know you have some I think feelings. you've heard what I've, I've heard a lot of feelings. I've, I've spoke about it a little bit. Yeah. Um, watch Visionless on Vimeo. I think that pretty much kind of sums up your thoughts. All right. All like right. my I feel that. political views. I feel that. Uh, Politics are interesting. Yeah. It's a weird time to be. It's a weird time mm-hmm. to be alive. Or watch the Good Fight. The Good Fight good pretty fight. much aligns with my, I think, fully yeah. with my political views. Watch the Good Fight on CVS. What, what, what times? What times can people check C- it out? I keep saying CVS, not, not CBS. <laughs> oh, my not, God. Not, I was speaking not. to this girl last week, <laughs> and she's like, what are you doing now? And I'm like, I'm at CVS, <laughs> like an idiot. And she's like, what are you, a cashier? And I'm like, oh, my God. Store manager. Like, <laughs> CBS. Do you, do you use that to, like, pull girls? Do you, like, bring up that you work at CVS a lot? CBS? <laughs> I mean, now I do. Now you do? Because I can. You like, you Why like not? I also yeah. get a car. You, well, you get a car? Yeah. You have a good like, car. As, in a, 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 as an automobile. Do, 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 as in an automobile with wheels as and in, you put gas in it. As in, like, the wheels and the boat. Where do, where do I don't do, see do, gas do, stations in New York. Where oh, are there's there? so many. They're, they're all, all like, like, the, on, like, the east side. There's, there's none of them in the side. middle of the city. I've also, never I work seen in Brooklyn, them. too. Uh-huh. There's a bunch. Oh, you work out in Brooklyn? Yeah. I didn't know that. So they gave you a car. What kind of car? It's, uh, um, what's the one that has the cross one? What is that? Toyo. Toyo. Yeah, yeah. Toyota. Toyota. It's a Japanese one. It Explore, kind of, is it Explorer? Camry? Is it? No, it starts with an E. It's a Yoda X. I have a picture. Wait, 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 is it Toyota? Toyota? Is that Hyundai? Guys, I'm not a car guy at all. Evidently, clearly. I think clearly. you should know. The car one with the cross. <laughs> the one with the cross. I'm a Christian. I remember the oh, cross. Right. Wait, wouldn't the one with the cross be Chevy? Wait, what is that? <laughs> it's a baby mouse. <laughs> Is it there? No. Oh, it's a Chevy. Yeah, it's, it's a, a Chevy. Chevy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh man, I got that so wrong. <laughs> Definitely not. Terrible. But for the viewers watching, it's a nice little red velvet color, and that's her name, Red Velvet. Red Velvet. Yeah. You, I, I can just see. You I like, don't. I just don't like to label my car. Oh, I think my car could choose what they want to be. Sure. Yeah. It's you know, uh, it's, it's I can, no, I'm I can, just really bad with cars and names. I'm I can really picture you driving to work. And you've just got your music on. You got a cup of coffee. Like I can picture that so clearly in my head right now. Well, you better because that's how it is. How it is, just ra- jamming out, going to, going to work. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. Me, what's Brooklyn like? I never go to Brooklyn. I hate Brooklyn. Um, it's too open. Too much space frightens me. But the openness. I feel like that's a good thing. Too much. Too many All like I angles say is to be attacked. For me, from. Brooklyn is cool. Um, but going back to driving, I think. Parallel parking was created by the devil. 
Yeah. Oh, right, so is that I you grew up in San Francisco. I can parallel park. Traffic cops oh, yeah. work for the devil. Work with the traffic cops work for the devil. They do, yeah. Um, they're all trying to catch me breaking the law all the time. How many tickets have you gotten? Leave me alone. We're not speaking about that. Oh, my. Like, you've got, yeah, more, got two, no, actually, more than two then. That's more than two. <laughs> with this car, one. <laughs> one. One. Right. And that's all. Yeah, th- that's it. I'm not going to give So by, give, by them giving you a car, you've actually lost money. No. Because <laughs> no. you would have had to pay for the subway. But you pay for gas. No, I don't pay for gas, baby. They pay for gas. And your par- your parking? Blink one for yes. Oh man, I just blinked twice by accident. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm really weird. Was it was it a great was, it like pretty crazy getting a car from a company? Like was it really, was that like a really exciting thing? Yes. Magic. I give it back when the season's over. Oh really? So I'm enjoying it. I feel like it's a good form of motivation. Leave it, leave it parked like back in Brooklyn during the weekend because, one, if I am going out with friends and drinking, obviously, you don't want to leave it. Two, yeah. parking, mm-hmm. like I said, in the city is four. Yeah. Uh-huh. And the traffic Being workers. Cheap. Is that what they're called? Traffic cops? Yeah. They get you. You don't, you don't have a tool with them. Oh, I don't get along with them at all. I think it's funny. That I think you should get an actual job. You know? Fighting words. Um... I think it's funny that like certain people don't get good at parallel parking, depending on where I'm you are. I'm kidding. If you, I, that was mean. If you're doing your job. I mean, yeah, if you, if you grew up in New York, I feel no, like you bad. You would never. You never parallel park. Yeah, you, just, you, you never, never park. You don't you have your license. Yeah, yeah, you don't drive. Uh, did, did you drive a lot growing up? You want to hear a funny story? Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> did I grow up? Did I drive a lot growing up? Not really. Uh, my brother did a lot of driving. Thank you, brother. Um, once Thank I you, was brother. Wa- working on a music video. Um, and I had to drive. And it was, was like this in high school or college? College. College. My sophomore year. I remember doing And this let's just say I paralleled park perpendicularly. <laughs> <laughs> you just turned in? <laughs> yeah, and I just, and I had to get the food. I was just like, if I go really fast, maybe no one will notice. I came back and beep, beep, beep. I was yeah. like, relax. <laughs> you know, like. Imagine what the, those other people off. thought. Like they, they're yeah. driving, they don't know that this is just a split second thing. They just come upon this car, just <laughs> perpendicularly <laughs> parked, cars, just sticking yeah. out of the road. Maybe I saved them from something. I don't know. Maybe I did. Or maybe you made them. Maybe you're doing the Lord's work. Maybe, yeah, maybe you're doing, doing the Lord's, Lord's work. work. Yeah. Unlike the traffic cops. <sighs> you fall out of that guy. You should, you should. No. No. They no. See how fast are you going? How, like, how like, fast are you going? How fast are you going? On the on the streets. Yeah. You don't even see me, so how would you know? How, how fast were you driving when they pulled you over? Oh, they didn't pull me over. They, they, they I, sh- I got shot at screen. No, 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 no. I got a ticket for parking. Party. Oh. Yeah, no. Dude, oh, I'm a great driver. Like, I feel traffic, like you can't. Huh? No one gets, like, in trouble gets a speeding ticket. Oh, in oh it's yeah. speeding ticket. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That, no, yeah. like, the, I don't speed. The heavy, oh, yeah. The oh, those, those motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. No, no. Okay. I don't know. I was misunderstanding. Those guys, like, are, like, pretty, pretty lame. It's line of any sort. I don't really get what they do. Like, are they cops that are trying to become real cops? Or are they cops that are going down? So they're cops. No, they don't pack heat. Yes, no they way. do. They pack heat? Yes, they, they, they pack heat. They have heat. guns, these yes. cops that we're talking about? I stay away from the devil's people. <sighs> um, That's awesome that you got a car. Though. It's very cool. You hang out in Brooklyn a lot these days? I mean, for work. For work? I went out in Brooklyn with some co-workers yesterday. Really? Yeah. You like your co-workers? Good people? Great people. So smart. So nice. Like, I'm telling you, I've never worked at a place where everybody's so nice. Really? So nice. Like, everybody. Everyone. That's awesome. Oh, and I like that. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Which director? I'm probably gonna have you use, uh, send me this before you publish it. Hopefully. Yeah. Sorry, it'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, don't worry. You'll have I said anything that's bad? I don't no, think so. No, 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 no. You've been like been killing it. And, like no, we yeah. can, uh, <laughs> you can probably like start wrapping it up. Yeah. Yeah. Like we love it. That's how we like. Yeah. Yeah. Because like we realize like for right now. Yeah. Do people actually listen to an hour of? Honestly, no, no, no. The average, people, no. A lot yeah. of people listen though. A lot of yeah. people listen. The average yeah. listening time is about 20. four minutes. Four minutes. You think so? I, I have the analytics. I, I know how long people are. Okay, we seeking now. So we'll get like sixty people. We'll view it, or there'll be place. sixty views. Wait, you can actually see like when someone goes on. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But this we're not doing the same. You guys are pretty good. Uh, we're trying to get better, so, man. We're trying to get better. I'm so proud yeah. of you guys. We're trying it's to get better. It's our learning experience. I think every podcast we've done has gotten so much better. You guys better. are great speakers. It gets better each time. It gets easier. Like we just my English is not very good looking sometimes. No, your English is so good. 
Oh, thank you, buddy. She's so good. Especially for someone like who didn't, who didn't say it. Start out oh. speak with English. <laughs> what, did you think, what did you think I was gonna say? I was just messing around. Uh, you still you? I know you still hang out. Last couple questions. I know you still hang out with Kirsten. Shout out Kirsten. Hope you watch. You watch it. I do. I do. How's she doing? Kirsten. She's great, she's becoming a nerd. She works a lot, which is so <sighs> good. I love when my friends work. When my friends are like grind. When I have, you know, because it encourages you to right, yeah, be working work too. too. Exactly. If you, yeah. if you live with people that like are bums, it's, it's gonna rub off. I just got a job. Actually, yeah. live with people. You just, I mean, you, you yeah. guys are doing something. You know, like if you have passions and doing something. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be like a job specifically, but if you have a passion and your passion is making like little three D models of Play Doh. Make the best three yeah, D models. We, we love like, people like that. That's what yeah. no, if so there was someone yeah. passion who was watching good. this who makes three D models out of Play Doh, like yeah. please come on. Like like that's the kind of people we want. Um all right, I think we're gonna like call today, but like dude Thank you so much yeah, for coming. No, yeah, thanks for taking the in. time to come. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. Yeah, I'm gonna do that, that ASMR with the pickles. What? what? Never mind. That's for next episode. Yeah, that's, that's for next time. Bye bye. All right. Thank you.